Hey guys, this is Real Appalachia with Shane. And Melody. And today we are in... Bluefield, West Virginia, slash Virginia. Yeah, we're going to be in Virginia <laughs> at some point. We're in West Virginia right now, right? Yes. And if so. you don't recognize behind us, we're at the Mercer Mall, and they have mm -hmm. what I call the Hollywood sign back there that mm -hmm. says Mercer Mall. That's I always thought time. that was cool. I yeah. did too. We'll get a closer look at that. Yeah, the land of some of my family. Yes. So let's get on the road it's and show. There's a lot to show and a lot to say and do in there. That's right. So we're starting at the parking lot here at JC Penney. It's been around a while, yeah. but there are new things that took Planet over. Fitness. Yeah, Planet Fitness. There's, I thought the McAdoo's, and you're telling me that it's gone, maybe. I yeah, think. That hurts yeah. my feelings. And there's a Hobby Lobby, Lobby now. now. I'm going to try to get a little bit more close up on the... This what is I, one of the last indoor malls that I know of. I mean... In the area, anyway, right? In City, Tennessee. Yeah. Tennessee Cities does well, but yeah, this one's... Hung in there, uh, Bristol's. You know something that you can't buy them all? What's that? This shirt. You can buy it on our merch link. Oh, wow. <laughs> a real Appalachia whooping. Yeah. Now, mm -hmm. you've needed to get one of those here lately. I'm I also designed this one, too. You did design that yes. feature, didn't you? Yeah, so, with a switch. If you want some of if Melody's you know. artwork, slash support us, slash have a t-shirt that has a switch on it. Yeah. How many times have you got switched in your life? Be honest. None. I was going to say your mom's too soft. No, uh, I was a good kid. Now, my mom and dad, my mom made me go pick my switch off the tree. That doesn't I, surprise me. I got whipped with my own switch, so that wasn't no fun. I'm going to get one off that tree back there and switch you now. Let's get on the road. Well, it's sad but true. It looks like McAdoo's has bit the dust, unfortunately. Yeah. It's replaced by bar and grill. Oh, sauced and loaded, but... Well, it looks like the mall's falling pretty hard times here lately. Yeah, which is sad to see because I love this mall. It's still, you know... There's not any indoor malls left. None. Hardly anymore. I remember a lot of the stores that used to be here. There's a bookstore here down in this section, and there was a game store. Mm -hmm. um, down here by JC Penney was the pet store in Kenton. I remember that, and I remember one time when a uh, hamster got loose and, and was running around, you know, people causing panic. You know, some, some people are scared of that kind of stuff. But it's a little bit more of the mall area. This K Jewelers is still here. There used to be a jewelry store right down through there, too. And this used to be sunken right in the middle. I remember they I filled that in at some point. Not. Yeah, and this is used to be the uh, Foot Locker. What's the sadly where I used to work? It's Athletic Express back in the day, owned by Foot Locker. And anyway, I've spent many a night in here stocking and selling shoes, and there's almost nobody in Mercer County I haven't sold a shoe or a t shirt or something to. And also saw Dracula get beat up here once. Dracula. I, yes, Dracula got beat up. There's a guy dressed up as a, this is the dumbest idea of all times. But there uh, was a guy dressed up as Dracula that would jump out and scare people during the uh, Halloween season. They had one of those seasonal uh, stores. And then we, a guy came getting chased by the cops and security into their store. And they arrested him and they pulled out like a Bowie knife out of his pants. So apparently this drug dealer, Dracula jumped out and scared him and he beat up Dracula because I walked out and Dracula was laying in the floor right here holding his stomach. And uh, yeah, so Dracula versus drug dealers doesn't end well for Dracula. That's my story, so. Well, here's the Chick-fil-A, alive and well, and that's all I'm worried about, to be honest with you. Here's the food court. Still, the Great American Cookie Company's been there a long time, too, so. Good to see some things have not changed. All right, leaving the mall. We cut out about two minutes of the drive for you, so yeah, you're welcome. You yeah, because it's going to be a long video, isn't it? Yeah, it's going to be a long video no matter how you slice it. Exactly right. But I love Bluefield. There's a special affection, but I can't imagine what it's like for you since you have family here. Yep, I do have family here. So, some backstory on that. My family is actually all from out, like, Gregson County. But sometime when my papa was, like, a teenager, I'm pretty sure, from what I understand, it was, like, in the 40s, they, his family moved to Bluefield. But they would still go out and visit, and that's how him and my mama got together. You know. Because, yeah, they were neighbors in Grayson County. But anyways, so I've got all kinds of cousins that grew up in Bluefield, and some still live in Bluefield, and they are mountaineers, proud, proud mountaineers. So. I see a lot of that up here. So I know yeah. that from working at the mall, but it's, it's a religion up here. Oh, yeah, and my mom's my mom's cousins they were all really close and they spent a lot of time in bluefield with them so the blackwells yeah. blackwells of bluefield you want to get a new civil war started talk about virginia tech hokies versus mountaineers up at the mercer mall Girl, what's you, so? uh, it is, that's the borderline bash right there yeah yeah i could believe it so 
Yeah, Bluefield's a hugely important town. A lot of people sleep on this place, but man, it has got a history a mile long and two miles deep. Oh yeah. And so Bluefield was settled by two families in the early 18th century. Um, they built a small village with a mill, a church, a one-room schoolhouse, and a fort uh, against defending against the Shawnee Indians. And we talk about the Shawnee Indians and uh, Lake Shawnee. Yeah. If you haven't watched that video, go watch that video. Yeah, please go check it out. The Haunted Lake Shawnee. Yeah. Where people ask us from time to time about that. And it's, yeah. It's, yeah. And that's one of my favorite ghost stories around here. Oh, yeah. So, very cool. So, in 1882, the Norfolk and Western Railway pioneered the area and began building a new railroad through Bluefield. And that is kind of what got the boom started in Bluefield. It was yeah. huge, like back in the 40s and 50s when my family come here if you look to the right you'll see a bunch of the rail yard still mm -hmm. left over to the to the like set to the right and it was massive you know what's strange about bluefield is it does not have the huge history in coal mining specifically itself mm -hmm. it has the railroad history which is obviously tied to the mining yeah but everybody that's had family here has had somebody that worked for the railroad oh yeah that's what my family did yeah. yeah and it's as much as part of the coal history as anything else but it's just actual coal mines weren't in bluefield mm -hmm. and i love how bluefield got its name it was named to be uh, for the chicory flowers in the area that would give the fields a blue purple hue. Did not so, know that that was exactly um, what it was. I knew it was. It. Yeah. Or that's what it's believed to be, yeah. but we're going to go with that. Yeah. Yeah. So. When you get downtown, Bluefield has seen so many changes because it was bopping back when the coal boom was going on and the railroad business was big. Oh yeah, well Pocahontas was basically the first seam found in the area, yeah. right? First seam of coal. And it was the Mac Daddy of all coal operations back in the times, the Pocahontas Fuel Company, and they fed right into this railroad. Mm -hmm. So that's why this, you talk about a one-two punch, you had Pocahontas Fuel Company and the railroad here. This was a major player in the history of American. Oh yeah, sure. Not just Appalachia. Yep, it helped support the Industrial Revolution of the whole United States. So, yeah. Now, the downtown area really fell on hard times. When I was a kid, it was the place to come. As a matter of fact, the first escalator I rode was right down in its commercial district. Oh, yeah? And I didn't, you know, it's the funnest thing ever. We used to come down here to shop, and then the Mercer Mall kind of put the kibosh on a lot of that. Cause it came in and sucked a lot of the business out from downtown kind of like walmart does yeah and kind of like I, I talked to my cousin larry before we come out here and he was talking about that's the norfolk and southern pocahontas division's headquarters right there was right there yeah. at the, the left we just passed it but yeah you're but he was talking about how that the mall kind of it's when the town started dying out for you know i guess just how you said that people started leaving the downtown area and going out to the mall yeah, so here's more of the railroad to the right, too. You can see how, like, a locomotive shop. I mean, this thing, back in its day, even fairly recently, it was jamming all the time. And now it's not like it was. It's still... And back during the First and Second World War, they got coal from this area to supply the United States and the United Kingdom. This was so vital. Now, people mm -hmm. don't know that it's the most underappreciated, underknown story around here is that Hitler had Bluefield listed as a target to bomb. Bluefield, West Virginia, they were going to come down here and bomb these rail yards. Yeah, isn't that wild? So you're, if you know you're on Hitler's hit list, yeah, exactly. you're an important person. Yeah. Important place. So like in the late 1800s also, Norfolk and Western Company selected Bluefield as the site for its headquarters and repair center. And that really set off the boom. Yeah, and this is the, the more the historic district that you'll see right here. Well, make a couple of passes through here because there's a lot to talk about. So there's David's Downtown Restaurant and Catering. That was a, I forgot what that building was at one time and here's some murals and I'm gonna pull in and take a look at those. I love this kind of stuff. I do too. And there's somebody tailgating me, I'm not gonna lie. That helped, yeah, I was a little intimidated. So there's the first one here. It's got more of a military theme to it. Mm -hmm. The souls of the righteous are in the hand of God and there is no torment and, and there are no torment shall touch them, my bad. There's a training history. Yeah. And there we go. Pretty cool. City of Bluefield. City of Bluefield. 
Pretty cool. There's a big train in there showing some miners with the, the old days when horses, that donkeys, awesome. and that kind of stuff would come down, yeah. Yeah, I love trains. And I'd love to know who did those. That's, looks like it's been around a while. I know it has. For, I've seen it for a long, long yeah, time. Yeah, I don't see any names on there. But like you said, it looks like it's been there a while. It needs some touching up. It does. That beautiful building kind of to the left on the screen that we'll get a little bit yeah. better of. That is post office, right? Yeah, uh, it says federal building and U.S. courthouse. So, oh, oh, and they then got the post, the post office. office. Yeah. But there's Sorry. a, I love that clock right there too. And we'll come back. Chamber of Commerce, we just passed it too. But like I said, there's a lot to get in. And hey, I totally missed the big sign that said federal building. I was looking at the one that said post office beside of it. Yeah. That, like church down there is beautiful. Mm -hmm. We'll pull in here and turn around. Here's Bland Street. And then we'll turn around and go back down the main part of town. Check out the old church though. I like that. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of getting back to the boom. In the 40s and 50s, just Bluefield, West Virginia alone had a population of around 21,000 people. Just Bluefield, West Virginia. So Man. Yeah, yeah, that doesn't, yeah, the, so the Virginia was, you put that in there, and you had a huge mm -hmm. area. That's the biggest one in the Tri-Cities, just about. Oh, yeah. As of 2020, it is down to about 9,600. Wow, that's a pretty so big drop-off, yeah. It is a big drop. Well, that is to the decline of coal, and of course. Yeah, the, and so the railroad has declined also because yeah. of the decline of coal. So, coal. you'll see straight ahead there to the slight left, the Chamber of Commerce building, and the massive hotel to the right mm -hmm. it, it used to be the biggest one in west virginia and it's now it's been converted i forgot what it was originally called though i'm just glad this thing's still standing that is beautiful yeah it's not the west virginian manor it reminds you of like the peabody in memphis or oh, yeah. you know you can tell it was once really grand and yeah it's magnificent it has these little stores in front west virginian and, hotel yeah West Virginia no doubt that's what it was. And it was like something yeah. pretty normal. So we will make one more pass through here because I'll, I'll cut back down. Ooh, the Ugly Duckling Antique Mall. It's a cute little place. Well, I'm a little heart sick. The Landmark Antiques, the one that I love, has got a liquidation sale going on. So uh -huh. I hope that doesn't mean they're going out of business, but I'm afraid it might. Uh, that stinks. Mm. I used to love coming down there. They had a lot of, I collect coal mining stuff, or I used to anyway, when I had money. <laughs> The city of Bluefield was incorporated in 1889, and there's always been a strong black community in Bluefield. It was the founding site of Bluefield Colored Institute, historically black college. It developed into Bluefield State College. So this business that we had Camer or Camer, it's been around a long, 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 long time as an institution here too. We didn't mention it first past him, so I wanted to show that and then go down through here where they they got another mural yeah. now back in the day you would have seen a lot of empty buildings here and they were starting to get dangerous because of fire hazard and all that stuff that so, mural is beautiful it really is isn't it now, that, that's that's one of the best ones i've ever seen honestly that is it looks like a picture we had to jump out and show that up close yes that sounds like a good place yeah, we just had to stop and show this. This is remarkable, to say the least, is it not? Oh, I love it. It's beautiful. I've never, I mean, this is so detailed. That's where the saying, pretty as a picture come from. It really is. It's like, I'd like to have that hang on my wall, but I it's know, about three it. times bigger than my house, so. Maybe a shrinked down. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. So pretty. We just had to show that up close on just all the detail. Let's see. It was Bluefield in the 1950s, artist Larry Akers. Larry Akers, well. Larry Aker. He did a fantastic well job. It just really captures it too. There's something about it. Yeah. Well, here's the Coal and Coke building, or the former Coal and Coke building, and it looks like it's seen better days, kind of like the coal industry in locally. But. Yeah, very true. One so time, much detail. I love it though. Yeah, one time this was a very impressive building. Mm -hmm. Sprinkler system. That's awesome. You got an alarm, fire alarm. 
Well, this confirms a lot of the things we said in all in one mural, doesn't it? It's yeah. nature's air-conditioned city, Bluefield, West Virginia, and you notice a beaver on this, and it's called the Bluefield High School Beavers. And yeah. they, you talk about a terror of a football team. Oh, yeah. And basketball, for that matter. They've been great for since inception, basically. And here's the Bluefield Lemonade Festival, and that confirming that when it gets over 90 degrees, they hand out lemonade. Yep. And then just, it's just beautiful in winter. So there you go. And there's Bluefield State. And established 1895. This is Guard the Hill. Oh, I didn't see a Christmas city. That's neat. Golly, I'm yeah. selling it short right now. East River Mountain. That was one of the hangouts from what my cousin said. Yeah, yeah there's a tunnel. We know the tunnel, yeah. One of my uncles helped put the tunnel in. He worked on that some. Yeah. And I love this Maltese Falcon, which is, goes back to Humphrey Bogart movie, but mm -hmm. Granada. West Virginia's Christmas City. Well, this, this city would have been something back in its day. Oh, it? yeah. Can you imagine? Yeah. I just wish you could zo zoom back for about 75 years and see what it was like. Wow. And we also had to show what was the formerly the West Virginian Hotel. Isn't it beautiful? Yeah, it's now a retirement center, if what you tell me. Yeah. It was built or completed in 1923, and guess what it cost? How much? A million bucks. That's back then, 1920s. Can you imagine? So this thing was the top of the food chain when it was built. It was a, built to last, and that's why it still stands for good. Oh, yeah. It was designed by Alex Mahood, and if that name sounds familiar, he designed the Itman Company store, mm -hmm. and he also designed the Wyoming Hotel in Mullins that we Which went to. Which I love. Yeah, and they're both marvels of it's connect architecture. connected to the commercial bank. Which is also beautiful. Yeah. So Alex Mahood is a name you need to remember in this part of the country. Oh, yeah. His fingerprints were on a lot. Man, and amazing so stuff. talented too. Gosh yeah. I love these old buildings. I do too. But they say this place originally had a barber shop and it, I mean, everything you could possibly ever hope. A lobby, dining room, newspaper kiosk, coffee shop. Ladies lounge, ballroom. Wouldn't he let it go back in time? Oh god yeah. I see it. I had a billiard parlor, bakery in the basement. Can you imagine how nice wow. this thing was? So there's 24 guest rooms on each floor and there's 10 bedroom floors. So Wow. That's a lot of people that can stay in that hotel. It is. And now a retirement home. And now a retirement home. I'd say it's still pretty nice. It's gotta be. Put you in there. Well, it won't be much longer, will it? <laughs> You're about to drive me to an early retirement. <laughs> of course, one of the most famous residents of Bluefield was John Forbes Nash, and he was the basis for the movie A Beautiful Mind. And he was, yeah, he was just a genius, an absolute genius, and he was actually a winner of the Nobel Prize. And they also talk about Hugh Ike Schott, and the Schott family is huge here. There's a very benevolent family that they really sponsor a lot of things that go around through here. Them. And there's the Key family they talk about a little bit here. And Alex Blunt Mahood, which we just spoke about at the West Virginia Manor, he was a great architect. Oh yeah. So they also get into a little bit, it's kind of neat to see this, the first serving a free lemonade, lemonade. 1939. How awesome is that? Yeah, they got a picture of it. And here's the Edwards Collegians. Look so. how cute the girls are dressed. <laughs> Little socks and sandals. I love it. Yeah. I'd like a big old glass of lemonade right about now, wouldn't you? Me too. I tell you, if the air conditioning's on in this city, then they need to get it looked at. Yeah. It's hot. Yeah, today it's, <laughs> yeah, like you said, they need to something out. Not as hot as it would be in Bristol. I no. guess I'll give them that. <laughs> yeah, and they talk a little bit about these buildings. AJ Hearn Building, built in 1900. Uh, then we got People's Bank of Bluefield building. That's beautiful. Yeah, absolutely. And then there's Milner Matt's Hotel. Actually, distinguished guest in Labor Union, John L. Lewis, very famous for the UMWA. And then they got mm -hmm. fighter Joe, Joe Lewis, which I misspelled his name. Herbert Hoover. Cowboy star, Roy Rogers, Herbert Hoover, yeah. The Colonial Theater. Mm -hmm. And Jesse Owens is said to have held exhibition races in the basement. That's amazing. He was, was the really Olympian. Cool. He was the one that really set Hitler back. They were talking about the yeah. master race in Germany, and he came and, and beat their greatest runners. Can you imagine Jesse Owens being here? Oh, yeah. And that Colin Coke building we just showed, too, was built in 1906, and it says in the Chicago commercial style, mm -hmm. metal internal system, which provides support for the, support for the building. Mm -hmm. so. 
pretty cool to see this and it's of course part of the coal heritage trail and again there's the i want to call it camer i don't know why i think i know it's pronounced that way but it may be camer but there's their furniture store so like i said an institution they've been around for years and years and years mm -hmm. and they were both voted the two virginia's best furniture store so that building down there is the original bluefield daily telegraph i guess no oh. Cool. Yeah, that is. Let's, let's get a zero in where it shows that at the top of the building. Of course, it's moved on, but the building remains. So we stumbled on this little display for John F. Nash Jr., the Nobel Prize winner from 1994, again, and talks a little bit about him being the, his story being captured in the movie Beautiful Mind, mm -hmm. which was a fantastic movie. And he actually had a bachelor's and master's degree by the age of 20. Now, this that guy, awesome. yeah, yeah, the man with the genius. Let's just be honest here. And if you look up here, you'll see Montgomery Ward at the very top. It's one of those, I love those. ghost signs that you hear so much about. But yeah, on the back of the coal and coke building, right? Yep. And then, so this was like I said, it's a commercial district. There was a lot going on down here, even when I was a kid. Yeah. It just kind of, you know, and that was about when I guess the Mercer Mall came in about that time and it was starting to die down a little bit but makes sense yeah. so straight ahead is what was known as the ramsey school it was built in the 1920s and it is notable because there's seven entrances to it that are all on different levels so you got that one there two here well there's one two there three and four here so we'll drive around and show a little bit more of that but it's just up above you can see the bluefield arts center too and it is gorgeous on the inside and is a performing arts center that dates back to the 20s as well. Well, as you can see, that thing is as steep as it could possibly be and there's yeah. another entrance to it as well, so. I don't think I can pull up there without losing my transmission. I don't think so. <laughs> Here's the front of the art center that dates back to the time when it was called Little New York here. Bluefoot had that reputation. There's a lot of bars and nightlife, and and they also had a thriving art community. And you can kind of see that if you go back into that era. You can see how that would be. Very New York-y. And of course, over here is the Kennedy Center. I'm going to show it a little bit, too. nice little work of art outside the art center. Great detail, although I'm not sure what he's painting here, but up there on the hill, the fellowship home, that looks awfully nice, doesn't it? It's beautiful. I'm not sure what it is or what it represents, but man, it's nice. Very pretty. Hopefully somebody can clear us up. Yep. Well, we're here right across from the Granada Theater, too, and you got a little bit more... Granada Theater. Historic, yeah, I shouldn't have... It was built in 1928, and it was actually built for vaudeville acts. But the Granada Theater brought many stars to the theater, such as Bing Crosby and Frank Sinatra, and I even heard Clark Gable, so... Man, that's, you don't get any bigger than those three names uh, back in that area. Yeah. Clover Club's right down the street too, that's interesting, but yeah, we're in the presence of greatness here at the Granada then. That is some heavy hitters there. And now it has been restored recently and it's a movie theater now. It looks like they show some old movies, not like super old, but you know, some popular older ones. So I would love to check out a movie here sometime. I would too. I would just, love just that. Just to say I've been and, in this building. Well, and like my second hometown, Lebanon, is kind of doing the same yeah. thing. They're making an old movie theater out of that. So yeah, I love, love seeing that. I love seeing the yeah, too. Just mm -hmm. I'm glad to see people not tearing down but rebuilding. So because you can't build history. Where's Clark Gable, Frank Sinatra, and exactly. Bing Crosby in? Well, we decided to stop at the rail yard, didn't we? We did. And I'm not regretting it yet, are you? I'm not. I haven't had a bite yet, but it looks pretty good. And I got the slaughters and some tater tots. Yes, and I got the rail yard burger, which is yeah. pretty daggone good, I must say. And if we end up without getting a milkshake, it will surprise me. Oh, me too. I'm already thinking about and debating. Those milkshakes look awesome. We kept them in here for later just for that purpose. Oh, yeah. She said, yes. Where a lot of commercial buildings once sat, there are now signs telling the history of Bluefield. 
And one of them that I really enjoyed reading was about the diverse city that it's become. It used to be back in 1900, West Virginia was had the highest native-born population in the entire nation. But by 1917, it had one of the highest rates of foreign-born citizens. And that is obviously due to the massive influx of foreign immigrants to work in the coal mines, as well as the African-Americans from the Deep South. And also a lot of African-Americans worked on the railroad and they ended up staying here. So it explains a little bit of the diversity. This one tells a little bit about some of the buildings. It talks about Alex Mahood, who we talked about a little bit earlier. It shows the People's Bank of Bluefield, which is pretty much where we're standing at right now. It was also served as First National Bank, Pedagogue Store and White's Pharmacy. And then there's the Long Commerce Building, which was headquarters for many coal companies. Had 14 there in 1922 alone. And the Federal Building, which is now the Elizabeth Key Federal Building, is she was the first woman to represent West Virginia in Congress. And then there's the West Virginian Hotel, completed in 1923. So there's other historical signs that talk a little bit about the rail history and, of course, the gateway to the billion dollar coal field. One of the things that I found more fascinating was that it was the headquarters for the Baldwin Feltz Detective Agency. And they were, a lot of people call them the gun thugs. They were the police enforcement for coal companies back in their day. And you may know that from the May 1 massacre, they were engaged in that battle. And so they were really despised by men. The coal company sent them to police the area. And of course they policed in favor of the coal companies rather than looking out for the men's best interest. So. They were known as being pretty aggressive, to say the least, and they were nicknamed as the Baldwins back in the day. But again, they had the Mad Mate One, Mingo County there. They had the shootout on the Main Street and it ended up being 13 Baldwin Feltz detectives. They were in town trying to evict some striking miners from the coal company owned houses and then a gun battle touched off with the police chief there, Sid Hatfield and ended up having 10 people that were killed, including Albert and Lee Feltz. And then in the in aftermath of that, Sid Hatfield was gunned down in Welch at the McDowell County Courthouse steps. So, a lot of history here. And again, this is just a little panning of the commercial area where once some buildings were, but they've been raised and they've actually cleaned the city up a lot. So as we come back off the hill here, the historically black part of the town was across the railroad tracks. Mm -hmm. So on the other side of the railroad, which you see right in front of you, which we'll drive down that way in a little bit, just to give you a little look of the full view. Here's uh, going across the bridge. So we cross over the rail yard. Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial Bridge. Yeah. So that's where you get. And of course, Bluefield State is a historically black college and university. I guess they call them HBCU. But here again is where known as be the black part of town back back in the day and probably to some degree is still the same way. And it's a beautiful view of downtown Bluefield, West Virginia from over this way. Oh, so here's the Bluefield Yard. You'd go down that way and no trespassing. So we won't trespass. Yeah. I'm very respectful that way. Yes. It may not stop at every stop sign, but he obeys not, uh, if, not I see him, if I see them, I try to stop. Now, <laughs> I look, am I looking off the side of the road half the time? Yes. <laughs> but have I hit anybody? No. So. <laughs> have you almost hit anybody? What, what define almost? How, how close is close? <laughs> oh, I know the answer to that. I was just testing you to mm. see how honest you were. I know. You're witness to a bunch of it, haven't you? Oh, yeah. Not all those make the final editing for some reason. Mm. Especially if they, you know, result in you shrieking and pain and agony and fear. And this will be a good little view of Bluefield, like yeah. I was talking about. You see the winding hills. Look at that. Up and down and the old churches. So pretty. Yeah, let's cross back across and see what else we can see and talk mm -hmm. about. Bill Dudley was from Bluefield. I didn't know that. NFL Hall of Famer. New York Giants, uh, Ahmad Bradshaw. 
Yes. And the widow of the actor Lauren Green. I'm wanting to say Lauren Green lived, or at least stayed down here some, or at least that's the rumor from back in the day. And that was the rumor. From Bonanza. From Bonanza. Do you remember the music for that? The song to it? <laughs> ding, 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 words to Bonanza. Really? You do not believe me. I do not believe you necessarily. I don't disbelieve you because you proved me. It is absolutely true. Somebody in the comments I think you. you got lucky. I, th I think, I believe that it's true now, but I don't think you knew that it was true. I, I did, did know. You. No, <laughs> I did know. Listen, my family watched Westerns. Okay. okay. But me, and my family. Boy, can you imagine coming off of this road in the winter? That'd be a Or if day. your brakes went out. If your brakes went out, you'd be a do goner, wouldn't you? I wish I knew. These old churches are beautiful. Yeah. I love that white house right there on the corner too. Look at all the detail no. on the porch. I'm counting on some folks bailing us out on this because there's a lot of historical stuff here that I know we're missing and it's making me sick. First Presbyterian church to our left here and it's mm. a gorgeous church, this white one. Well, in so many old towns, you know, a building was built as something and then it becomes something else and then yeah. it becomes something else. And so a lot of times people know it as different things. Yes. So here's the manual Lutheran church right and then well there's a police station straight ahead mm -hmm. and then we'll get back off this hill so there's jan pack supply solutions and fire station this place has shrank a lot in my lifetime i just remember all those buildings that were demolished in the downtown area and it's kind of strange and sad to see because you know it was always a big deal to come to bluefield when i was a kid yeah Usually if we come to Bluefield, it was a visit family. So yeah. I don't know the area much outside of getting to family houses. Yeah. <laughs> My family's house, so. Captain D's. No, a little bit now, but not as well as you do, I don't guess. Well, I've stayed, I had to stay down here. I got snowed in when I was working at the Mercer Mall one time. It was a scary day. You know, it, the weather is always worse in Bluefield. I it's remember cold. times that we would come up to the mall to go shop and it would be fine and then you come out and there's a couple inches of snow on the ground. Yeah. Well it's known as the air-conditioned city. If yeah the, I can see that. Yeah. If the uh, temperature busts 90 degrees and I don't know if this is still a thing. There's a Bluefield Daily Telegraph by the way which is a local paper but yes. I wanted to say if it busts 90 degrees that they still might do this. I know they used to. They used to give lemonade out for free. Really? Yeah. It was just a good little thing that they did. That, that's pretty good so, for me because I'm always hot-blooded. I'm well, it's a good lemonade. Now. So if you can get some free but, lemonade, you know I'm all about it. Well, it's funny because I just looked at the temperature when you said that, and it's 89. Yeah, oh, you're kidding. Yeah, and I think that it was around home. It was supposed to be 95 today, yeah. so that makes sense. So if you have stayed on that track, you would have been on 52, but we're doubling back here because there's still a little bit more to tell about what's Virginia mm -hmm. side. So the Salvation Army there to the left, and then let's see. There's just a gorgeous building here that I'm trying to get to. If and possibly the houses can. are so pretty. Oh, yeah. Those old Victorian-like houses, I love that. Yeah, they date back to the glory days of Bluefield. The heyday. Very pretty. There's parts of Bristol that's like this too, it reminds me of, and it is a split city, two different states, so. That's always been cool to me. This building here has always just blown me away, just the architecture and all that stuff. So. Oh, it's very pretty. Okay. Yeah. What? So now we're turning into Route 52, which goes all the way up to McDowell County, all the way to Welch, if you follow it, which we're not going to do today, which we could. Mm -hmm. I love one up there, but... We're gonna to go to Bluefield State College for right now. But I don't really have anything else to say here, except you've dodged a bullet up until this point. But I threatened you, I promised you. I Let's not pretend for them. This is real Appalachia you've been singing all day. But I haven't been airing it. This will be the first time it airs. I've been practicing. This is my big moment. So they have dodged a bullet. Yeah, they've dodged I a bullet. unfortunately have not. Well, that bullet's about to leave the chamber right now because. All right. I played it for you earlier, but then every time I come to Bluefield, you know what I think, don't you? What? In the West Virginia hills, 
There must be 10,000 stills And they found the biggest one Outside of Bluefield A little peaceful country town Nothing else for miles around Okay, I saw whiskey run like water Outside of Bluefield Listen, now if you people out haven't heard this song Go, here's your homework assignment Can I pull my fingers out of my ears yeah, yet? Yeah, you're good uh, <laughs> Go listen to Stonewall Jackson, Bluefield. But he spells it with two words. I don't know why he did that. I guess he shows how little he knows about Bluefield. But oh, yeah. Stonewall Jackson did it, and then Ralph Stanley the so second. So I guess he didn't go to Bluefield State College. No, he didn't, but that's where we're about to pull in here and tell another little story, which is not nearly as fun or happy or pleasant, but No, I almost real. went here. Did you know that? I did not know that. I have a Bluefield State College shirt, and at kind of last minute I decided to do ETSU instead. Well, you may be the reason why they've got the nickname they do. What's that? If you'd have come to school here, it would have been the whitest historically black community, uh, black college and university. That's not just because of me, though. That's that No, but it could have been. You would have made, you're just so white. That... No. <laughs> I joke, I joke, I kid, I kid, but that is a nickname. I don't know it is. You, yeah. It is, yeah. But it is. Because a... it, like we had talked about before, it was in history. A black college and yeah. now not so much. Yeah, it's been integrated and pretty yeah. very, very diverse population and it's a very well respected and Chris Paul, the basketball player, the phenomenal basketball player, wore a t shirt of this and it really hit people locally. It was like, Oh my god, this is awesome. Yeah. And uh, everybody loves Chris Paul, he's just great. And I wish to goodness that he would win a championship in his career, but it has nothing to do with his video, but Chris Paul's a great guy. Mm hmm and there is the w paul cole jr it's a very nice campus yeah, it is. you know and everybody here was very nice and it just worked out for me to go elsewhere but yeah i was excited about possibly coming here so yeah it's always not except it's very well respected school locally mm -hmm. mahood hall so i wonder if that's after alex mahood Anyway, we'll stop and tell the story of some very unpleasant event that happened here. So we wanted to stop and tell about a really ugly incident that happened here. Now, like we said, this was a historically black college. Initially, it was made for black coal miners' children. So it started off black, and then by the mid-60s, it became more racially diverse. There was about a mixture, about a 50-50 mixture between white and black students. But there really became a big blow-up in the mid-60s when they brought in the first white president of the school. So they brought this man in and it really touched off a lot of animosity because he brought in a lot of white faculty with him. So there was a lot of resistance between the, the black students for that because they could feel like, you know, they were kind of getting pushed out. So it's actually the opposite of what you really think about when you think about these racial incidents. You think of the white people resisting black integration. It's kind of odd to see that there was a exact opposite thing that happened here but so tension boiled up and then in 1968 which is also notable for as the years that Robert Kennedy was assassinated as well as Martin Luther King Jr. but there was a bombing here and a black student or black students were responsible for it they were more of militant wing of of the uh, student body but they they ended up bombing it and one of the 1.6 million dollar buildings were were bombed and so it really touched off. There was a big shutdown. The governor shut down the schools, dormitories, and that really sent the school into more of a downward spiral. And we were talking earlier about it being the whitest black college, but the reason it got that reputation was after this. A lot of the students didn't have anywhere to live, and a lot of those were the black students. So they moved out, and now it's somewhere in the vicinity of 90% white. And uh, so it's kind of it's more of a commuter school now than people staying on campus and that kind of thing. So this kind of touched off a um, big change in the college. Well, we just went through Bluefield, West Virginia. Why not hit Bluefield, Virginia while we're at it? Yeah. That's what I always say, right? We need to. So we just come through Midway, going back into Virginia. Mm -hmm. We went yep. through the back road through Brush Fork to give people a kind of an idea of if you're from the area. If you're in United Kingdom, I can't help you. Um, yeah, that's exactly right. But I love you anyway. And a lot of my family lives out the way we just come from, which maybe isn't technically in Bluefield limits, but it's it's Bluefield, you know. Uh, I know, it's like you know how. That's well, like Dorian's lumped into Richlands, where I live from. Yeah. So 
So there's a lot of stuff back through here too. This would be the least part of Bluefield, Virginia that I'm familiar with. So I, I'm gonna be counting on you on this one. Well, my family reunion happens at Christian Acres, which is out by the armory a little bit the way that we just come. So I know how to get back to the four lane. <laughs> we go through this, this tunnel? Light. Please tell me we go through this we tunnel. We go through this tunnel. Oh my God, this is awesome. And this, you stop at the red light. It is so narrow. Boy, I don't, I don't know my curl could fit through here. I, it's very narrow. And so it's got the red light, green light. And it it's is. notorious for car accidents through sure. here. People coming flying through. And if I'm not mistaken, this is the tunnel that one of mom's cousins wrecked in. And it, she was stuck in there for hours. They had to get like the jaws of life to oh get her out. Oh my God, that, that, you just described my worst nightmare. Oh yeah, so what you do when you go through one of these tunnels is you roll your window down. Oh. And when you get in it, you have you to honk the horn. The horn. Yeah, that's for good luck. Yes. But I but tell you But you better what, hurry because we don't have a green light for I'm very sorry. long. Boy, that's loud. <laughs> it echoes, yeah. Now, I've heard a story that there was found somebody hanging in here. I was kidding. You say that about every tunnel. You say that about every tunnel. There's always that ghost story. Yeah. You're taking Tom to... Uh, well, this guy much. looks like he's patient with me, so... As long as somebody don't come flying through on us, that's my worst nightmare. Well, that was my favorite Woo! thing. I love that. So, from here we go left to right. You go right? Right. Okay. I don't know where we're at. It's like tire service. Oh, for sale by owner. I was going to say, get a free ad. Stop right in front well, of Well, maybe it. we can sell your old building for you and then. Mm -hmm. Like we said before, this is probably not very well marked state lines here. I don't know why. I wish they were more pageantry and fanfare about it, you know? Oh, you yeah. just crossed into Virginia. Mm -hmm. My, uh, my cousin, he talked about cruising back in the day and they'd go to East River Mountain and go park and drink and, uh -huh. <laughs> and Burger Boy and the Bluefield Drive-In and City Park. And we had our family reunion at City Park for a while, but I was just really little then. No, wait a second. They just said we're in Virginia. Yes. Now yeah, we're, so, so we're, we're just we're, now. So Midway is West Virginia. Yes. Okay, now, yes. now it's cleared up there. Thank you. I have an uncle that's from Bluefield, or Graham himself, to Tucker Kid. Hmm. Yeah. So I want to mention that too. Oh, it's... and out like Brush Fork, Mill Street lived out that way, and he actually had a garage and he'd work on cars during the day, and then in the evenings he'd sing on TV. Name one of Mill Street songs. You. Oh, I'll name a hundred of them. Okay. Loving all. Back streets. Oh, we didn't say sing on Main. I'll go sing a medley. There's Smoky Mountain Memories on the right. Pop my home in Tennessee. Yeah. Yesterday keeps Well, he, he went to Nashville and he made a big. Calling me home. Right. That's one of my favorite songs. Smoky Mountain Memories is just awesome. Now, that was an Earl Thomas Conley song, but he sang uh, the song George Strait sang called Oh, by the way, I met a friend of yours today. And me and my son, to this day, if either one of us says, by the way, the other one will jump in. No matter how it's said or when, we'll have to butt in and say, I met a friend of yours today. Torch Street had a big hit out of that, but it was actually originally a Mel Street song. Yeah, so this, I guess, is Bluefield, Virginia, it downtown. Is. So yeah. you see the old buildings here, very pretty. And there's the new Graham Pharmacy up here, which is a very known landmark, and that looks like an old. What's the post office? It is a post office. It looks office. like a train depot in a way. Yes, it's not. very pretty. I think that one in front of us looks like an old bank. Um, the one past the... Zanedale Christian. Boy, he's yeah. been around a while. And there's the new Graham Pharmacy right here on the right. So, you didn't even let me... Yeah, everything on down here is new Graham. So, it was originally... Bluefield, Virginia was originally Graham. Oh, sorry, you still went like Well, there. I like to see the thing at Freddie Hedge Veterans Memorial, wasn't he? Oh, okay, I'll yeah, turn yeah. back around up here. Oh, and then there's the Virginia Love. It's a tie-dye one. Oh, well, we got to see that. Of that course. is so cool. That is, you're going to steal these, aren't you? Let me pop the trunk. I would like to. <laughs> I'll pop the trunk and we'll if make off with four If you had enough up. room in your car. So, Bluefield, West Virginia is Mercer County, but Bluefield, Virginia is Tazewell County. Yes. And let me get in this history. Okay. Do you want another Mel Street song? No, I don't. You wanted to, you need to let me tell my history. Okay. Okay. So the uh, town developed 
uh, around a small post office originally called Penhook, and that was in the 1860s, and it was named for a small creek that ran through the community. And then it was incorporated as Graham in 1884. It's past the First United Methodist Church, by the way. I met a friend of yours today. You're supposed to jump in there when I said that. I'm trying to tell the history. You won't let me. Well, go ahead. So, before it was Graham, that for a brief period it was called Harmon, also for a Civil War he hero. So, after the Pocahontas uh, coal boom, the Norfolk and Western Railroad was set up in Bluefield, West Virginia, and that's why the boom was more on the West Virginia side. Well, kind of neat to see that the New Grand Pharmacy is inside an old Mason's Lodge. That's, yeah. I see that very often. It's so. pretty neat, right? Yeah. So then, um, let's see, what year was it? In 1924, I believe it was, is when Bluefield, uh, Graham become Bluefield, Virginia. And there was actually a little wedding ceremony that was held, and it was between the town people of Bluefield, West Virginia, and the new Bluefield, Virginia. They had a little wedding ceremony. How so cute cool, is yeah. that? Like marriage of the two towns. Yeah. But the Bluefield, Virginia population is way below the Bluefield, West Virginia, and always has been. So the population for 2020 was 5,000. Well, here's a Dairy Queen up here, and it's a landmark that I am very much acquainted with. I, I used to, it used to be one of the very few local ones, and yeah. I would always go out of my way to come to this Dairy Queen to get down, and it was great, by the way. Yeah. I met a friend of yours today. I can't help it. I, I got that started, and, <laughs> oh, I can't help it. I'm going to have to listen to this all the way home. Yeah, I would, you would have to listen to it. Bluefield, Virginia's tallest town. Does it really say that? Yep. Yeah. And then you'll go to the left to get back, like, towards Walmart and that little shopping center, which is also in Bluefield, Virginia. Yeah, I'm trying to get us to Mitchell Stadium, too, at some point, because that's a, a lot of neat histories. But we'll keep on rolling. All right. It's a neat little historic town. This is, you can definitely tell us was built up. You know, a lot of brick and, I mean, that's expensive stuff, always has been. So yeah. these are very well-built homes, a lot of them. Well, listen, if you don't come up with something to say, I'm going to sing another Mel Street song. Well, I figured that you were just on to, so. If I had a cheating heart, your eyes tell me. I love Mount Street. God, I love him. He was, I listen to him all the time still. There were several of his family members. He's from, he's, well, of course, he's up this way, and he's also originally from Rowe, Virginia, down near Grundy. So there's a little marker there where he was, uh, his home, you know, birthplace was. Yeah. Classic coal sales. Hmm. Well, if you'll look, it's gated up now and you can't get in there apparently, but this was a warehouse for the one Magic and only Mark. Magic Mark. Yes, Amar's Magic Mark. Oh, I was in Magic Mark. Did you really? <laughs> yeah. I can't help it. People said that all the time, and, uh, though. Magic Mark, yeah. Magic Mark. I may have, been, I'm not going to lie, I think at one point <laughs> in my life I thought that's what it was. I was like, oh, Magic Mark, okay. <laughs> Why would anybody think that's going to mark? <laughs> I don't know. It, like you said, I've heard it's it as, at least as often that way. Yeah, as, I think I've done it as a joke so much that I've started saying it that way. Magic Mark. I've heard you call it Magic Marks, too. Like a plural. <laughs> like yeah. Walmarts. Mm. The Walmarts. Yes. <laughs> Everybody adds the and an S to everything. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Now, I used to think it was, you know, I don't know. I used to just... I wouldn't even say it annoyed me, but it was just like, why do you do that? You know, now it's like, I, it's adorable. Yeah. The Facebooks. Yeah, Facebooks. Follow us on the Facebooks yeah, as awesome. Real Appalachia. And there is one of my favorite houses in the area. It's okay. so pretty. Who else's favorite house it was? Who? Lauren Green, right? Right. Well, they lived in a house on the hill overlooking oh, the Sanders house. Ah, my bad. 
you hear all kinds of stories. Yeah. Speaking of which, another story about Bluefield that, you know, you never, like you said, you hear about a lot of towns, but there was a rumor that Hank Sr. was seen in the back of a car here around the um, restaurant Doughboys, which was a um, restaurant for the railroad workers that he was seen in the back of the car and that the guy working there said, is he dead? And the driver said, no, he's fine. And took him on up the road and then later he was pronounced dead. Yeah, I said that about Claypool Hill and Richlands too and I've heard it a few times about you, you know. Very well could have been true all those places as far as we know. Yeah, very true. Because it is a persistent rumor that's hung around. Well, of course, you're talking about Hank Williams Sr., yeah. yeah. Both Another Cephas thing. Sr. No, yeah. Nobody well, caught, no, they they, they didn't call him both Cephas. They old but yeah. bones, but... Another thing I didn't get to say about Bluefield is about how John F. Kennedy did a campaign through Bluefield. He spent a couple of days. He was on the local television chant station um, one day and then spoke at Bluefield State College the next. And later that same year, he won the state of West Virginia. Well, that was huge for his election because, oh, yeah. he, as a he Catholic, he cared. He showed he cared, but he's also a Catholic, and they thought yeah. it would not play well in this part of the country. The fact that he could win that vote, right? Uh, because he was really strong with the union workers or the coal mines, of course. Yeah. So he really played into that and really propelled him to the presidency. So it's still wildly popular around here, which is funny because it's undoubtedly Trump country now. Yeah. But, but it really wasn't like that for many, many, many years. In my lifetime, even, yeah. the area was what they call good old Southern Democrats. Yeah. And it's just re more recently changed. Mostly because labor unions and all that stuff were more strong back in the day. Because if you didn't yeah. have the UMWA endorsement in Tazewell County, and also you didn't the, win. the Democratic Party has switched more to a more um, li liberal social yeah. issues. Whereas this is Bible Belt. This yeah. Is Bible Belt. yeah. So they went more conservative, which is more Republican. Well, I'll be darned. McAdoo's moved down here. Thank you. I'm oh, glad okay. they didn't. There you go. That relieves me a lot. I'll tell you that right now. Well, good. I'm glad. Yeah. I had that in all my heart. Of course, their shopping centers was Walmart and Sam's and all that good stuff. That was actually the first Sam's Club I've ever set foot in. Mm -hmm. First one I was a member of. Bluefield also has another college other than Bluefield State, and it's just called Bluefield College. And it's on the Virginia side. Mm -hmm. I have attended a graduation here once inside okay. their gymnasium. Yeah, well, we'll go find Mitchell Stadium here. Oh, it's actually Bluefield University. Oh, yeah, right that's right. That's Yeah, it's... My bad. You're bad. Yeah. Our bad. Our bad. It's been more recently. I do believe this is the turn where you go down to Mitchell Stadium. Yeah. Well, well they still it. have one sign up that says Bluefield College. So, yeah, I guess yeah. everybody will call it that for a long time. It's a very hard thing to switch. Well, clear it is in the distance, but there's Bowen Field. Mm-hmm. And that is the Bluefield Ridge Runners home, the minor league baseball. And I know a lot of big fans. Yeah, it used to be in the Appalachian League, which I guess it's still the Appalachian League, but it's not the same as it used to be. Yeah. If that makes sense. And this is an interesting piece of history here. It's the Andrew Davidson home place. It's the site of the Pioneer Cabin of Andrew Davidson and his family. Now, while he was out one day, an Indian raid came and they tomahawked his children, captured his wife, and then they sold Mrs. Davidson to a Canadian family. And then they ended up ransoming her out and bringing her back home, but just an odd set of events and kind of tragic history here just outside of Mitchell Stadium. Mm-hmm. It's starting to get dark on us, but there is Mitchell Stadium, which is famous because in 2019 it won a poll and it is the most or best high school football stadium in America. Mm -hmm. so. I believe it. It's really nice. It looks more like a college field. Yeah, I've been here many times for, of course, Richlands and Graham have had some knockdown drag outs and, of course, Richlands Bluefield. Because both Graham High School and the Bluefield Beavers play, play here. Mm -hmm. Even just, though it is West Virginia soil, right? Yeah, it's in West Virginia, but they share yeah. the stadium and why wouldn't you? Look how nice that is. Oh, yeah, definitely. I actually came here last year to see my nephew, Logan Simmons, graduate from That's Graham. That's awesome. Yeah. So that's the last time I sat foot on the stadium, but that's good to see it again, and it is a beautiful place to watch a ball game. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, as if this couldn't be even more special for Miss Melody. Yes. We made this discovery just now. Yes, this locomotive behind us was built in 1897, and it ran from Bluefield, West Virginia to 
Honeiker, Virginia. Oh, that just thrills her heart now. Hometown, yes. And it ran to Honeiker through the 1950s. Man, Isn't that's that awesome. so cool? That is, I love that's really it. good. Yeah. So we hope you guys like this video. If you did, give us the thumbs up. If you have some Bluefield history, tell us about it in the comments. Or just if you liked it, we love hearing from you guys. Yeah, and we also found out a feature we didn't even know existed. It's called the Super Thank You. And we've gotten several of those, several hundred dollars worth. And yes. I'll try to catch up on thanking everybody for them. But mm -hmm. what it is is YouTube has made it very easy to make donations. Yes. And there's a little dollar sign below our YouTube channel. And if you click on that, you can make a real quick donation. And we really appreciate it because... Helps keeps through, us you know. on the road. Yeah, it takes yeah. money to ride the train, no pun intended. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Also, you can subscribe to our channel yeah. and you can buy this awesome merch. Well, you look at that these t-shirts. Look at that. Yeah. Who doesn't need a good old real Appalachian whooping? Who hasn't mm -hmm. gotten one? I've gotten one in my days. Yeah, you need one. I got several in my day. And it didn't do a thing for me, did it? And we have the original Pocahontas. Yes. That is one of my favorites. Yeah, I love them. So we love, yeah. we love this merch. We yes. hope you guys do too. Yes, we got several mm -hmm. styles to choose from. Check them out and then we will. See, see you on down, down the road. road.